Hello! I want to explain how to season bagpipes, my bagpipes, both uh, mouth blown and bellows blown, and also say a little bit about bellows, uh, uh, seasoning bellows as well. Um, both the processes for, for mouth blown and bellows blown pipes are roughly the same, and so it's probably worth, worth watching both. There's, each pipe maker has different way, has adopted different ways of making bags and making pipes in general. So this applies to my pipes and may apply to your pipes as well. But if any doubt at all, I don't want you to compromise your pipes if they're made by anyone else. So do get in touch with the maker and see what they recommend. Leather is basically skin and it needs looking after. Uh, this is uh, the, my bags are made out of cow leather, and cow leather is very thick, so the actual leather itself has been skimmed and put an artificial <coughs> layer on it. My mouth blown pipes, I always leave the suede on the outside and the smooth side on the inside, and vice versa for bellows blown <coughs> pipes. Other makers have different systems and use different seasonings. Now, why season a bagpipe? With a mouth blown pipe, some people <coughs> blow a lot of moisture. It seems to be you're either a wet blower or a dry blower or I'm sort of in, in between there. But some naturally blow a lot of moisture in and you don't want a nasty pool of <coughs> moisture in the bottom which could cause, you know, have mould and could cause all sorts of problems. So what I pour in is a kind of seasoning which forms a slime on the inside and it absorbs any moisture that might be there. And then in between playing, it allows it to soak out through the pores of the leather. I'm often asked, how often should someone season the bag? And that really depends on so many factors. It's like saying, how often should I fill my car with petrol? It depends how much you play it. I mean, if you're playing it 20 minutes, a week or 20 minutes a day, you know, it's going to make a big difference. The quality of the leather makes a difference and whether you're blowing a lot of moisture in or not. So that's not very helpful. I can't give you a definite time, but if you're doing it once a month, I think you're doing it far too many times. And if you haven't done it for five years, then shame on you because molds can appear in this and this Hardy's Air seasoning has a fungicide and a biocide that kind of <coughs> stops that. Always feel to see whether, especially under the blowpipe, whether it feels slimy. Because if it doesn't and you leave it too long, the leather will start hardening and then that's time for a, a new bag. So um, there's no rule of thumb at all. And now the season, seasoning that I use is called Hardy's Airtight and it's, it's available online. So you buy it. You, you can follow the instructions for heating that. You have to heat it up and you follow the instructions of how to heat it up, but don't follow the instructions from then on because that's for Highland pipes, which play at a much higher pressure and have much more absorbent leather. So this is me telling you <coughs> the system for, uh, for using for my pipes. I, rather than heating this up because I'm seasoning pipes very regularly, rather heating this all up regularly in a microwave, um, I heat the entire lot up and then put it into little urine uh, testing tubes, which I think are 25 millilitres uh, each. That's what I use, it's just convenient, and then I can pop that in the jar, pop that in the microwave for a very short time, just so it becomes liquid. You don't want it to boil at all. Before you do that, it's worth <coughs> testing actually to see if your bag pipe is airtight. So take out the drone and the chanter and put them somewhere safe. I can't stress this enough because <coughs> if you put them on the table, they can roll off, the cat can jump on them, other things can happen. And <coughs> so put them in a safe place. Then with a cork, cork up the drone and the chanter. And the first thing to test is to see whether your non-return valve is working. Squeeze that, and I can hear that's hissing a little bit, actually. I haven't played this pipe for a long time. The non-return valve is made out of leather, and leather, especially when it has uh, gets moist regularly, just like shoes going hard if you don't oil them 
now and then just put a little bit of almond oil o olive oil tends to go a bit gooey so I always use almond oil just a couple of drips there and that will soften this up and allow it to to uh, to completely shut that's almost done the job it will soften the leather <coughs> if you keep on using that you may be getting leaks around the stock and that's because the leather may have pulled the binding may have been loose and pulled the leather through so that that point is come there and there's a leak around there around the stock so check your stocks and if they are down there then you're going to have to tie them in properly pull the leather back up and tie them in properly and uh, that will cure your leak the other possibility is it's leaking through uh, <coughs> the the sewing and it, your upper lips are actually very sensitive unless of course you've got a moustache um, and you can usually tell if any one is specifically leaking and there's a, a special way I'll explain to deal to deal with that. Now I have had customers who've dunked their whole bagpipe in water. Do not dunk, do not dunk. Uh, if it is leaking, seeking, seeping out through the leather, you can, uh, <coughs> one coat of seasoning will sort that anyway, but to dampen it is not a good idea. Right, to season the pipes, <coughs> first of all, you need to have warmed that up. Okay, here's some seasoning in the tube. Tube is open. I put it in the microwave. I've got it on a medium high and I'll do it for about 20 seconds and see how it's going. You really don't want it boiling. Yeah, that's fine. Absolutely fine. It's runny and it's not too hot. Ideal. And you're talking about really quite small quantity. I think this entire thing is 25 millil milliliters. It's about the same, same as an egg cup. That's my, my measurement. Now you're going to be pouring it in and working it around on the inside. And because you don't really want, uh, <coughs> you don't want the inside of the stocks to get mucky, to get seasoning on them. If they do get seasoning on them, you have to roll up bits of newspaper and clean them and wipe Vaseline on and everything. So that's just to protect, protect the inside surface of the stock. Now all the time you've got to remember <coughs> that the liquid when you pour it in will go down. Now if you let your stocks go down it may dribble out and it goes on your trousers. You always wear old trousers when you're doing this and always have a cloth handy. So I always hold the stocks up at the same time. It might be wise also to put corks in, but I don't bother because I do a lot of this. So pour a little bit in. Pour a little bit in. It's always a little and often is much better than all at once. You pour it in and then you kind of follow it down as it dribbles down. And what you're aiming for is having a layer all rounds on the inside so the entire inside has a has a layer on it this has been seasoned before so it's not going to require a lot of seasoning a new bag could require an entire one of these tubes put a little bit more in work away and eventually you can as long as you keep the stocks upright you can sort of push the bag into itself and uh, it's quite nice sitting by the fire just doing this um, <coughs> till you're fairly sure that there's the entire <coughs> inside has got a layer of it especially the area just below the blowpipe because if you are blowing moisture in through the blowpipe that stuff's going to wash away after that you can put your cork in and inflate it. Now don't blow it up like a, a balloon, just still keeping the stocks up, just squeeze a little bit. Now if you'd noticed that there was a leak in the, the uh, thread, in the sewing, you can blow it a little bit more until you see the, the seasoning just glinting out of some of the holes. 
just press it a little bit. As I say, don't blow like crazy. And then as soon as you see, I don't think, yeah, I know this is tight, tight, but if you did, then take the pressure off and lay it down flat with the stocks upright. And I put mine in the airing cupboard, maybe overnight, so that that seasoning that has got into the, into the holes can then set because <clears throat> It's not naturally runny. This is something that hasn't been in the month. Well, it's slightly runny, but you want that hole that's there to be filled up. And then the next morning, do another seasoning as well, and then test it again. But don't put ridiculous pressure on it. And <clears throat> that should deal with your leak. Right, with bellows blown pipes, I have the suede on the inside and that soaks up quite a lot of the seasoning. It's a different kind of seasoning than I use. I use beeswax and olive oil and I mix it up myself. Uh, I use by volume about one part of beeswax to four parts of olive oil. On, but on my little message I saw today it said plus a little bit and it didn't say whether it was plus a little bit of beeswax or olive oil. It's what I do is chip some beeswax up and put it in with olive oil and I use uh, this jug actually because it's got a lip it's quite handy and then I melt it in the microwave until all the chips of the flakes of beeswax have um, dissolved and then uh, I let it cool to room temperature take quite a while and then see what consistency it is this is kind of the consistency of, of uh, Vaseline and that's what I'm going for if I put too much beeswax in, it'll go much harder, more, more like butter. And then that's, it will work, but it then forms horrible little snottery lumps which can get in your reeds. Likewise, if you've got too much oil, uh, it's going to be too runny. So uh, just, just go for this, this Vaseline consistency and it's trial and error, really. There. So I heat that up in the microwave and, <coughs> and that's what I use. Uh, remember, take your drones and your chanter out. There aren't reeds in this one because this is a brand new one. Uh, but nevertheless, put that to one side, put it safely because those reeds are very easily damaged and uh, I don't want to make you have to make you any more ones. Um, I'm not actually going to season this one, but I'll show you the process. It's just the same as before. You make a little paper, paper, <coughs> protector for the inside of the uh, stock. I'm not going to use the charter stock uh, one because it's quite long on this designer pipes. Pour it in, work away at the bottom, work away at the bottom, then pour a little bit more in and work away at the top. Now you, when you've heated this up, you really don't want it too hot. If it's too hot, it's it could sort of go right through the leather and and sort of stain the leather. So you heat it up until it's all liquid and then let it cool a bit, uh, but not so it begins to get a haze and uh, harden. And that's when you do it. it it's, it's this balance between too hot or too cold. The action of this is to, uh, the oil softens the wax and allows it to soak in. I can imagine if I, well, could do that and spread a little bit on there it's going to soak in soak in and the oil is going to soak in <coughs> to the leather taking the beeswax with it and making it airtight because <coughs> on bellows blown pipes you want it airtight and it's fine if it's watertight as well with mouth blown pipes it's it's a different uh, system so <coughs> You put it in, you put a little bit in, and you work it all round. Now, if your bag was very dry, you hadn't seasoned it for years. And some of my bags I haven't sewn seasoned for seven or eight years. So this is not a regular, it's not like mouth blown pipes. This is something you may not have to do for eight years, 10 years, 12 years. <coughs> and then you work it in, and then you leave it, as long as all the surface is done, you leave it for, I don't know, for a while until it seeks in, maybe two hours, and then go back and see whether it still feels a bit dry. If you pour too much in, and I have done that in the past, you get these horrible great lumps of basically this there, and you don't want that. So the, uh, you just want to get it, 
nicely seasoned without without lumps inside it. So that's that's Spello's uh, blown pipes. The last thing I wanted to talk about was bellows themselves and bellows all different makers have very different styles very different styles of bellows and I make three different styles myself and they're not easy to season and with all this um, you know <clears throat> it's uh, it might be best if your bellows are giving uh, problems to get back to your maker and see whether your maker can do the, uh, do something about it first test is easy put your foot Put your finger on the end and see whether uh, and it, it's leaking. It's leaking slightly this but not a lot. Now the leaks can be along the sewing on the join inside there but most likely it's yeah it's 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 the uh, the valve. Now valves should pull out quite easily but not too easily and then just pop some oil on it. Now this is probably something good to do every year or two just put some oil on there it may be a bit dusty there's a way of of just putting a piece of paper under there clean some of the dust off a couple of drops of oil and then put it back so it does seem that these bellows with this will be pretty airtight let's get that back in yeah, that's, that's a big improvement. If, however, the thing about bellows is the leather is creased in one place and that is the area that you really don't want the leather to get too dry uh, because that could cause cracks in 15, 20 years. It's a bit of a palaver on my uh, Scottish bellows. You have to drive that pin out and then you've got more space <coughs> there to work. Take the valve out and then pour a little bit of wax in, wax seasoning, and then work it round really quickly all on the bottom surface and try and estimate where it's going, working around, and then <clears throat> do the same the other side. And obviously if you've spotted some leaks somewhere, you sort of work it in there. And also that join at the bottom, you can pour a little bit in. It's not, not a pretty job to do, definitely wear old trousers. And as I say, you might be best to contact your pipe maker. That's the basic process, but all bellows uh, designs are different. These ones, you have to unscrew these so you can do that. But it, I mean, these bellows, I don't think have been seasoned for 10, 15 years. And I think they're all right. You see, the leather is much, much thicker on bellows, so it's, it's not such a problem. Well, I hope that's been useful. I've been wanting to make this video for years and uh, I hope this helps you with your pipes and your piping. Good luck.